Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It Starts Now, the happy hour of finance and business. My name is Stanley. He started from the bottom, like really started from the bottom. He grinded his way up, uh, working at barbershops from different locations throughout East New York, um, Bedford Stuy, um, different locations. His, his come up is, is a serious, serious come up. Uh, from there, he branded off his brand, the Rock Boys, which is a YouTube channel called the uh, Rock Boys Enterprise. He also has uh, the, the merch that's out that's really doing, it's flying off the shelves. He's doing some good numbers with that. Please welcome my guest for today, a.k.a. <laughs> <laughs> Meatloaf. Welcome, welcome, sir. Welcome. What's up, big bro? What's up? Hey, what's going on? Same old shit. Yeah. Listen, man, a lot of people don't really understand your grind, how serious it is. Like, you, you started out working in a barber shop, correct? Correct. And okay. you had several locations, but you started out as a cutter. You didn't own your shop yet. At first, I started out as a, a cleanup guy. I used to clean up the shop years ago. Really? Um, yeah. What age was that? Uh, 12, 13. And um, it was in East New York on New Lots in mm. Georgia. And... um. It was crazy back then. There was a lot of drugs and shit going on, you know what I'm saying? And um, as I was cleaning up, because at the time I was running around looking for jobs and stuff, so I you know, asked the guy, the Hayes brothers, Anthony, you know, if he um, have anything for me to do. Mm -hmm. So when I was um, asking him, he said, yeah, you can sweep the floor, you know what I'm saying, make a little pocket money. And as I, you know, through the months and as I was sweeping, asking questions, you know, I was fascinated with the, the hair cutting. Right. So then in between there, I was, you know, asking questions as I'm sweeping the floor and um, asking which clippers to use, how you fade, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. He, you know, he, he, he was uh, showing me the way. Right. So the same time he was showing me the way, I was around, around the corner practicing on my brother. <laughs> 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 and you know, the, 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 uh, my friends in the neighborhood. So when I got my weight up, right. I came back to him again and you know, revisit that same question like, um, I don't want to sweep the floor no more. I want, you know, can I, can I start cutting hair here? Mm -hmm. And um, he started laughing. And um, he said, um, he said, me, look, I would love to give you a job, but I can't because it's, it's too much shit going on here. You oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I guess between, you know what I'm saying, grown men and you got little kids. Right, right. A lot of, a lot, a lot of adult stuff, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. A lot of, you know what I'm saying, drugs and, you know, things that's going on that I'm too young to see. Right. And I respected that because. That's you know, true, because they, they don't want to expose you to that. Correct. Especially at an early and age. And that's how I, I took it as a blessing that, you know what I'm saying? When mm -hmm. it's my time, it's my time. And um, from there, I left and started cutting on Van Sicklin in, in New Lots. Me, it was like five of us young guys. Mm -hmm. And um, God Johnson, he gave us, he gave all of us a shot. You know what I'm saying? He was doing us 50-50 percentage. And I ain't look back. I just was uh, grinding. You know what I'm saying? And then years later, I wound up getting that same spot on New Lots. Really? And opening it for my own shop. And that's your first shop? No, that was my second shop. Se okay. Yeah, my first shop was on Pennsylvania and Hegeman, mm -hmm. uh, Black Success. Really? You owned that? Yes. Oh. I used to be there, me, Tone, and Leon, and then I just split away from them. I didn't, I didn't see no, you know what that is? I didn't see no progression in them. Okay. And There's I no disrespect. Me. You just was hungry. I, I was just correct. You yeah. said exactly. I was just more hungrier than them. Yeah. They still there, but I didn't had seven shops after that. Wow. Yes. And then that was the reason why you started branching off with the brands. Correct. Because you you sell clothes inside the shop, right? Correct. I had when I when I moved on when I moved on New Lots in um, Georgia, it was a big shop. It was like eighteen hundred square feet, mm. and I had sections. I had the barber section. I had the clothes section. I had the beauty salon I had a phone store inside there i had everything because i didn't want my, my theory was if you come to get a haircut you don't want nobody to leave out with anything opposed just a haircut you right buy a t-shirt you want to buy some underwear you want to buy some clothes mm -hmm. you want to get your nails done you want to buy a cell phone and that was just my entrepreneur that was just me all the way around it was that something that's innate like you grew up with that entrepreneur i grew, I grew up because it's, it's almost like the same hustle mentality as the street you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying you got the best product they're gonna come to you no matter what. Right. And that's that was always my thing. You know what I'm saying? And yes, and I pushed that all the way through. And then from there, you started to like really create an uh, enterprise. An enterprise, correct. Oh, that's what's up, man. You know? And explain to me the Rock Boys. 
Uh, the the Rock Boy the Rock Boy brand came about when me and uh, one of my friends, he was from LA, and he was de he was designing motorcycles and stuff like that. And we was all we was all tight. We was all hanging out, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And um, if that's like if me, you, and and my boy is together, you know right. what I'm saying? We're gonna piggyback off. You know what I'm saying? Your boy, we together. So right. then, at the same time, I found a location in Brownsville on Sackman and New Lots. We found a look. I found a location. I brought them. Uh, uh, I brought them together with me. We opened up the location, and we started the Rockway the Rockway brand. But what made me start the Rockway brand? We was in the city one day at uh, One Oak, mm -hmm. and um, white girls chasing us out the club. They're like, "Where y'all from? Y'all don't look like y'all from you know from around here. <laughs> y'all look like y'all from LA or something." And I was like, "Nah, we from Brooklyn." Right. And then uh, they chase us out, and then they come outside and see. You know, black guys on custom bikes is right. it's not seen like that. So they was like, "Yo, you look like black rock stars." So that's how the rock boy name. You know what I'm saying? So me being the person I am, I said, "Nah, black rock star." Yeah. I said, "That sounds good." That's a, so that's a trademark, home. right? Yeah, there. that was a trademark. So right. I went. I tried to Google, you know, Google it and and um, Go Daddy and everything. I couldn't get it uh -oh. because Rockstar Games had took full control of all of that. Oh. Uh -oh. But Rockboy had came up, so, you know. They, they they give you an emphasis of the next name you can chick, pick and choose. Mm -hmm. Rockboy came up. I didn't even hesitate with it. Just snatched it I up right snatched away. Snatched that shit up, and I, that's all she wrote after that. And then you just took off. I took off. Yeah. And yeah. now you that Rockboy brand is like really literally taking off because now you're doing like um, I've seen the the final episode of the uh, yeah the, the Rock Rock Boy. Boys on YouTube. Yeah, the Rockboy the Rockboy. I just honestly I did the Rockboy uh, web series. Mm -hmm. To keep the the Rock Boy um, motorcycle game relevant, because I know a lot of the guys, the forefront guys before my time, they stopped at a coffee table book. Right. You know what I'm saying? And um, like Imperial Bikers and stuff like that. And I just wanted to um. I just wanted to be different. I just wanted to come out something better than that. You know what I'm saying? Just because anybody could do the book. Right. I just wanted to come out. You know what I'm saying? Like, ah, right, we're gonna take this somewhere else. And it just wound up me telling my story about my life in the streets and just collaborating my past life to my present life. Cause that's really what it's about. So you, you know? just made that, that connection. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I brought the stories, you know what I'm saying? There's some facts and there's some fiction in it, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But me telling the story, I'm playing myself. You know what right. I'm saying? And anything that's going in, in my show, I've been through, I know of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I just, I just put it together and then put the actors in place Everybody that's plays in Rockwell Empire, nobody mm -hmm. never went to school. I just wrote the script. I tell them what to play. You know what I'm saying? Tell them what, you know what I'm saying? This and that. And then we add lead and then we just take it from there. Is it hard being the front man? Like, you're yeah. doing it all. Like, you, you, you're you writing the script. You're acting in it. Right? And you're doing basically everything. Correct. Is it a challenge? Or you don't even look at it that uh, way? It's, it it's definitely is a challenge. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's definitely a challenge because... You got so much hats that you're dealing with right. at the same time. Then you got your personal life, you got your business, you know what I'm saying? You're trying to juggle everything around the clock. But honestly, I've been doing it for so long, it's like second nature to me. You know what I'm saying? Even like the guy asked me outside, he was like, yo, how do you put everybody in place? It's, it's before I used to have everybody together. Now, when it's your segment, I call you, you know what I'm saying? Jungle, I need you to play your scene. Mm -hmm. The stick up kids, I need to play their scene. And I just have them each day, you know what I'm saying? Which day it's, it's called for. I, we do their scenes. You running it just like the theaters, like the movie um, industry. That's how they run it. Correct. And when, when I started Rockwell Empire, I started at um, 15 minute segments. That's how I started because a normal show was 15 minutes. It just dif uh, different. How you say it? Um, differentiate mm -hmm. between uh, the commercials. You know what I'm saying? To add up to a half hour segment. Oh, uh, I get it. So when we started and then it was it was cool 15 minutes but then everybody wanted more and more and more i started doing 45 minutes i started yeah. doing I, I i just forgot the commercial so <laughs> if if they if they want the show to go air they put their own commercials and y'all figure it out yeah, yeah you know what i'm saying but i was just trying to be proactive to what was going on i was already thinking ahead already yeah. you know what i'm saying like i already had the deal and they was they was gonna break it down mm -hmm. but it was just so it's so crazy because the show is so popular the fact that it's so real 
You know what I'm saying? People don't even they don't they don't even care about that. You know what I'm saying? Right. They just want more and more and more. So But that's a good thing, right? Uh, when people have that demand Correct. and you're just trying to fulfill that demand, right? Because if there's no demand that means the product exactly. is not good. It should trash. Yeah. Exactly. So Correct. no, I get it. But that hustling spirit, where that came from? Um I think it came from my mom's. My mom's inst you know, she inst inst instilled that in me. Mm -hmm. You know, and um she was like, you gotta go get it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? By me being the oldest, the oldest child, she could, she kind of put that pressure on me, where I had to um, go out there and get a job. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Before my time. You know what I'm saying? Some of you jobs, she take half my check. You know what I'm saying? Everything, everything that's going on, is is because of my mother. You know what I'm saying? She Single family. That in you. Correct. Single yeah. family mother raised four of us by herself. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So I can't, I can't sit there and complain about me being the oldest child and my mother raised all of us by herself. You right, know what I'm saying? So right. that, that was just another thing where I look at where I can't take no for an answer. Yeah, literally. Literally, and that's just how I've been. Yeah, that's what's up, man. A, a lot of people don't understand that type of grind. Like, because you got to be consistent. Correct. Day in and day out. Right, like, there's no time to be to like slack because it takes a lot of dedication no, it, to grow something. It's definitely it can't be no slack whatsoever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And me personally, I guess the fact that I'm, I'll be 52 December. From I can remember when I was like 12, 13, and you just you know when you know you want it. I remember I used to share ice ice cream, ice cream truck come my mom's break out. She right. can't afford the you know. Give her kids ice cream, mm -hmm. so she's gonna leave. Cause you turn around, your mother's not there. Before she was there, the ice cream truck, she hear it. She hear <laughs> that shit true. coming down. The, yeah, yeah, she hear that shit coming down the block. She can't afford it, so she gonna break out. Yeah, you gonna go, you gonna turn around, you hear the truck coming, you gonna hear the noise, and you gonna look around, turn and look at your mother. She can't afford it, she break out. Yeah. So I saw that and I knew what that it was. Hurt. Yeah, of course it hurt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't get your all the kids. You know what I'm saying? You can't feed your child ice cream. Right. You know what I'm saying? That Especially shit hurts. Especially when other kids have ice cream. Exactly. So that's and that's and that's more of my hunger how I came up you know what I'm saying I never want to see them days again yeah you know and and when that that really resonates that it stays with you for a long long time you never forget it yeah you never forget it I was the cheese lines the 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 uh the welfare centers the, the um what's the line what's the line in the supermarket the no the frills wick. owl oh, yeah. the wick all of that I've been through all of that. All that yeah you know what I'm saying so I a person can't tell me nothing about what I've been through, I've been through it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I was ashamed because I write, damn, everybody got regular food and we got fucking everything is white in our shopping cart. Yeah. But that's what we had. You know what I'm saying? That's what we had to afford. Yeah. When he says white, he means that no brand. No brand. Right. You know what I'm saying? So these kids don't know what that is now. No. They need to. And then, like, and like I tell, we talk about this in the shop a lot. These kids nowadays don't know what it is about struggling. They don't know go to bed hungry. You share Chinese food with five kids, mm -hmm. French fries and chicken wing. Everybody get a chicken wing and, and French fries. They don't know about that. Right. But I look at it now. They how would they survive if they don't have if they don't go through it? We so busy trying to show our kids not. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going. My kid ain't gonna have this. Right. Where they need to have it. Where you all right? We ain't nothing in the refrigerator. Yeah, I I can't do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They need to yeah. see that because if they know if they don't understand it, they will never survive out here. That's true, because yep. everything is instant gratification right now. Everything. Yeah. So when you when you go home and um, I mean uh, when we was growing up, we used to have like my thing was peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Of course. Like that that to me, and it, to this day, if I'm ever starving, it's between peanut butter jelly sandwich or I'm getting like some wonton soup or something. You know something. Not crazy. even that. Exactly. Not right. even that. It's but like that's because you understand that I can go without this. Correct. This whole this whole pandemic thing started. People fighting each other, going through whatever they're going through. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I could go get the oodles and noodles. I can go to that. <laughs> Them shits yeah. cost ten dollars, uh, ten packs a for pack, a dollar. Right. I can survive yeah. on that because that's where I came from. That's what you. Know. A lot of people can't do that. Yeah. They won't understand that. Right. I've been through that era, so that shit don't matter to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I can I fill my whole shop a couple up with that, and that's it. That's some dollar francs, and I, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I know where I came from, so that's that's why I say. These kids need to see that. You know what I'm saying? Stop showing them where I don't want my kid to struggle. They need to see the struggle to survive out here. Right. And that's that's just the way I feel about it. I agree with you. But how could you show that 
struggle when you have the internet and everybody's like, like if you go on IG, everybody's living good. Yeah, everybody. It's every, yeah. That shit is a, that a facade. Because even people that, that see me from my show, from Rockboy Empire, they say, Milo, for that's, that's, that's really your car? That's really your bike? Or that's really your barbershop that you had? Mm -hmm. I didn't have people come off the bus and be like, yo, you are really in this barbershop. Yeah, well, we're in the barbershop right now. Exactly, but yeah. a lot of people, because there's so much, it's so much for gazy shit going on on Instagram, on, mm -hmm. on the internet, where they show all the good side, they don't show the bad side. Like, yeah. they think, oh, these fancy cars, everybody, nah. You got to show everything. Yeah. And that's, and that's one thing I say about me. I don't hold no punches. I put what I, if I'm going through it and I feel I want to put it out, I put it out there. It's not for feedback. It's just I want y'all to see my good and my bad. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't, I don't have to hold no punches. Mm -hmm. If I'm going through a, a, a child support issue because I feel I'm going through it and I'm hurting, I put it out there. Right. If I got an accomplishment that I did, I put that same shit out there too. So you can't say a uh, meatloaf. Uh, he's stunting. He's one stunting. End. Exactly. Right. Motherfucker, I just paid child support thirteen hundred dollars. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm I'm cool with it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It happened. It happens, yeah. You know, so it but don't that, stop me. No, clearly. Clearly, it don't stop yeah. me. All right, you paid that. I paid thirteen hundred. I make it back up somewhere on the street. Right. That's how I look at right. it. Right. And to to me, when I when I hear the story, I'm thinking somebody that had some struggles, but then still had you know you have your adversities, and then now you overcame a lot of your adversities but even though you accomplished so much there's still struggles always yeah it doesn't stop and I, I don't think people understand that even though you make it to a certain level there's still challenges on that level it's like playing a game Correct. right you get you get to the next level now that's on that that challenge there's a level in that challenge that you have to overcome mm -hmm. but people don't see that they just think like oh because you made it here you you're good no I, me personally I didn't make it nowhere yet I'm still out here in the gauntlet with everybody else and I told my boy, if I didn't make it, y'all wouldn't even see me. I wouldn't even be here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I know. I said, this is, they had a say a saying where um, when you make it, you know, people tend to leave their neighborhood, leave their area, and go get secluded. Right. They said that's, that's like one of the worst things you can do because you're so secluded, you don't know what's happening to the outside world. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You don't know if the, the, the crooks are sitting by your gate. You don't know that because you're so secluded inside your comfort zone where you ain't paying attention to the outside world. Right. You have to pay attention to your surroundings, what's going on. Right. And I, I'm, I'm a strong believer in that. But it's also too dangerous to have so much where it's around a group of people that don't have. N nah, I think that's just us. You think so? Pilk, the, 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 the people who got it already, they, don't, they ain't worried about all of that. It's just, it's just we, we put ourselves in a stigma where they say... All right, you, you made so much so you can't have this particular type of car in the hood. Right. Why not? You worked for it. Mm -hmm. You earned it. So why put me in a stigma where I say I can't have what I want if I earned it? True. What about those that may say, damn, Loaf is stunting on me. He know we don't got it like that. Why he's stunting on it? Even though they should look at it like motivation, like if he got it, I could get it too. That's, that's us. That's, that's us as a race. Nobody want to see nobody else look better than each other. Mm -hmm. All right, if you're struggling, I, they want me to struggle just as well as you struggling. All right, motherfucker, we got the same 24 hours. You can get up, go find a job, go pack some bags, save your money, mm -hmm. and do the same thing I'm doing. I can't de 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 first, uh, deter your 24 hours. Right. You can't deter mine. Right. You can sit there and want to do drugs all, all, you, all your life. I ain't going to do that. I'm going to take my money. I'm going to grind. I'm going to put two, 300 to the side mm -hmm. and let that shit build up. And get exactly what I want. Opposed to you saying I'm stunting. Well, I'm a stunt. If we're doing the same thing, you could work and, and blow your money. You could be in a club with your money. True. Blowing it, you know what I'm saying? Putting it for IG. Mm -hmm. While I'm taking my same money and stashing it under the fucking mattress and saving it. And then when it's time for me to get what I want, I can go under my mattress and say, I want this right now. Right. So you can call it, they can call it what they want to. It's, it, it's it, just us as a race that think like that. Is it that's, is, is that we, the how? You were able to get your first barbershop? My first barbershop, I saved my money. Mm. And um, the guy Johnson that we was working for, I was making $2,000 a week cutting hair. We was doing designs for $70, $80. Around that time, it was just drug dealers everywhere. So, oh, we, yeah. of course, we was the hottest guys in the neighborhood mm -hmm. that's cutting hair. Mm -hmm. So, we making, I'm counting my tickets. I said, damn, I made $2,000 this week. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Yo, I'm looking at my ticket. I know I'm getting $1,000 at the end of the week. Right. 
Johnson was beating us. He was giving us 750, 800. Johnson, Saturday come, here go my tickets. I want a thousand and change. That's what I'm supposed to get. Not 800, not. I just couldn't take it no more. I went berserk in that barbershop. Right. I'm not playing with you. I'm tired of you doing it. I'm not, I'm, I'm tired of not saying nothing. I want my money. And ever since that, I just went on my own. He paid me my money and I left his shop. He said, you, you getting out of this shop. Mm -hmm. Give me my money first before I tear this shit up. Give me my money. Mm -hmm. I ain't looked back since. And that's when you started saving up? Yeah, I started saving up. I worked for this other guy, Eddie. I, I worked for him a couple of years and then I just, I started saving. I knew what I want. I wanted a shop. I wanted my own shop. I was that nice right. in East New York. If anybody know, I was the nicest one in East New York. I had guys debating for me to cut it, cut in a shop, bus stop, all these other shops. No, I want my own shop. I'm going to stay here at this fucking piece of shit shop till I get my own. And that's what happened. So do you think the fact that you knew what you wanted, that's what helped? Yeah, of course. Yeah. You got to have some type of vision with what you want. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I wasn't letting them stop me. That vision start first anyway. You know what I'm saying? Vision is going to be your drive to get what you want. And that's all she wrote after that. I think that vision is like the the vehicle. Is the vehicle like you you're in the car, you're driving, but it takes certain skill sets to get you there. Like communication, you gotta know how to uh, you gotta know how to save, you know, you gotta know your numbers, you gotta know how to communicate with people, you gotta do that. But the vision is the car, it's taking you there. Correct. Right. But a lot of people can have a vision, but they're not going nowhere. Isn't it because they're not putting action behind it? Yeah. I think I think a lot of people they they want to sit there and um plan it out. I don't want to plan anything. If it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. You sit there and try to plan stuff and put in perspective about, all right, this particular day I'm gonna do this. Mm -hmm. That shit never gonna happen like that. Never. You know what you want, you just gotta go at it. I tell people I I don't plan anything and it works for me. I see something I want it, I know I gotta get it, and that's it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I didn't got storefronts where I didn't have nothing planned. I knew I wanted a store. I paid the money, got saved up, saved up the money, gave the guy the money, and I got it. You know what I'm saying? As I as I got, once I got the location, I sit in here for like two, three days and just look at it, and just put my visions together, and that's oh, it. How you gonna Correct. arrange things? Exactly. Yeah. Shit could be trash. You just gotta have a vision. Everything everything starts with vision. Yeah. Relationships, business. Anything you got to go in life, kids, everything started vision. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We all knew that everything that's going on. Nobody knew, nobody sh showed you homeschooling or, you know what I'm saying, how to take care of your child. Everything's on you. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get your bits and pieces from your parents or anything, but everything going to be on you anyway. Yeah, ultimately it's you. Exactly. And your choices. Correct, so. Yeah. I want to talk about um, the chopper that you got. Yeah. So now you told me because of your friend, that's when you started. Um, yeah, because of my friend, my friend, we started doing the, the motorcycle thing, and um, I guess me, how I am as an individual, mm -hmm. was made me stand out, you know, dealing with the, I guess the way I dress, I got my own way of dressing, my own style, you know what I'm saying, and um, I just put it together how I want. It may not work for everybody else, but it worked for me. Right. And um, at the time, my bike used to spit oil you everywhere, shit used to smoke because, you know what I'm saying, my bike was just, it was just retarded. But, um, it was like, the nigga Meatloaf don't care, he gonna fucking ride it anyway. <laughs> He's smelling like oil you, smoke, <laughs> shit coming off him, but he flies a motherfucker on <laughs> Coming and, off fresh, Coming right? off fresh, I swear. And, and it just, that was just my stigma, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. So as we expand and start pushing and, you know, taking off, I started seeing how I was. I just started looking at myself as a brand, opposed to my whole uh -huh. team. And um, I mean, one day we had a, a a shoot, a magazine shoot. And I was telling you know, we want f for everybody. She was like, nah, nah, we want you. So of course, if they want me, it kind of looked like- Do you separate me I'm yourself? setting myself from the team. Yeah, yeah. And then we got into a little conflict about, um, it was like, uh, me love doing certain things on his, it's not about me doing certain things on my own. It, it, when they, when a person write a, a, a editorial about you, mm -hmm. it's what they want, right. which makes it uh, intriguing for the audience. Right. They thought I didn't say nothing about my team, this and that. 
I said, let me explain something to y'all. This is what I have to tell them. I said, let me explain something to y'all. I said, this is, yes, y'all all my team. But I can't tell nothing to these editors what they write, what they want to put on their script or mm. what they want to put on their page. They do what they want to do. If it's more intriguing, we're going to go with that script. If it's more intriguing on, on that end, we're going to go with uh, they 14. Right. I, I don't have nothing to do. If she wanted to interview, that's what she wanted to do. Mm-hmm. I can't say, all right, I'm going to bring my team and she only wanted me. Right. So she could say, all right, all right, me, though, if we don't want, we don't want because you brought your team, we wanted you. So well, well us as, a, as being a group, and, and I, I just feel a lot of us, we, we look at it where it started being competition now. Yeah. If I got if I got to be around you, I don't want to compete against you. That's not my thing. That's never been my thing. Mm-hmm. I said we all gonna get a shot. Everybody gonna get a turn. I said you're not looking at it the bigger picture. If she came to us as a as a as a as an individual or whatever, it's still a notch for Rock Boy Choppers. Right. You know what I'm saying? The brand is still being out there. Exactly. Right. But they didn't see it like that. Mm-hmm. They just look at it, old Meatloaf is, is is doing him. Doing his own thing. So that's where the enviness and the jealousy started coming. Mm-hmm. And I said, I'm not here to compete with you. And it was like, yo, my partner was like, yo, why they put his bike, uh, my bike is better than his. And I it, said, it gets that competitive with the bike? Yes. Wow. I didn't lost ample friends over this motorcycle shit. Wow. I swear to you, I'm not even exaggerating. I got to the point where I don't want to compete. I'm not here to compete. You got you, you got your way, and I got my way. Right. Meatloaf is flashy. Yeah. That's always been me. I, I agree with you. I think people don't pay attention to what they need to do. They're always looking at what the next person is doing. Correct. And a lot of times you get ahead if you put the focus on yourself. Exactly. Yeah. But not even that. If you, we all on the same team and we thinking as a unit, mm-hmm. it works. Yeah. I'm not trying to deter what you got going on. Right. I'm not coming to say, all right, I'm coming in the back to, to take over what you got going on. I, I'm good at what I'm doing. I can market. You know, so I can market mm-hmm. me. I can market everything that's going on with me. That's I got a niche for that. Right. Because I know where I want to be at. In right. order for me to be where I want to be, I got to put it out there. Right. You ain't going to go to the extent I'm going to go to. So you can't get mad if everybody want meatloaf mm-hmm. because I put myself out there. I remember he said at the time, he said, you only marketing you. I said, motherfucker, we all got cell phones. Everybody can market each other. Mm-hmm. I said, but if I'm marketing you, him, and him, who's marketing me? Because y'all not marketing, so who's marketing me? So if I don't put myself out there, who's going to put me out there? But if, if can someone say that falls on the job of the leader? No. Nah. You don't think so? No. Nah. Mm-hmm. Because I can't tell you what to do. Uh, I can't, I, it's like I'm marketing. Right. I got to market. But if they look at you as the leader, I'm just giving high Yeah, of course. Right? So if they look at you as a leader and they're saying, okay, I'm, I'm, my expectation from a leader, he got us. I do got y'all, right. but each one of us have to hold our own too. True. You know what I'm saying? True. I can market the brand, yes, as a whole, mm-hmm. but when I market Jungle for Rock Boy Empire, Jungle got a job to do himself too. Yeah. Because Jungle gonna have a whole set of followers on his end. Mm-hmm. Milo gonna have a whole set of followers on my end. You gonna have a whole set of followers on your end. Regardless of how you look at it, we all gonna promote Rock Boy Empire as a unit. Right. Because all of us are involved in it. I hate mm-hmm. to tell my... um. My old partner that was with me with Rockwell Empire, I had to cut him off face from the show mm-hmm. because he was thinking about himself. I said, collectively, this, this, this show is about all of us. Right. I said, I brought you in thinking it was going to be easier, but it was more of a disaster, the fact that I brought you in on it because you looked at it where this is my opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Milo already is big already. Mm-hmm. You was doing music videos. Now I got you on the show. Now you feel you bigger than everybody on the show. Right. Nah, it don't work like that. It's still part of the show. Exactly. Yeah. So Fifty Cent said something in his his new book, um, uh, Hustle Smarter. I believe that's the title, Hustle Smarter. He said that uh, he had to leave Banks and uh, what's the other one, Lloyd Banks and what's the other one name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he had to leave them behind because what he saw where everybody could be, they didn't see it. Correct. Right. You put them, you, you take your partners, make a better life for them, and you put them in a the house, a big-ass house. Mm-hmm. So if I think I'm, if I'm coming and I put my team in the house, I'm thinking he may have opportunity. He say, yo, Milo, if I want to I wanna do this. Mm-hmm. Jungle may say, I want to do that. All right, I'm going to put you in position. But you put a person in position, they ain't got no, no leadership. They sitting there waiting for you. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I can't sit there and say y'all grown men. I can't. Then on top of it, y'all fucking up my my property. Y'all y'all abusing what I got, what I made. Mm-hmm. So of course I understood when when that should happen, and I and I said yeah, they fucked up because he gave you an opportunity to present yourself and y'all didn't. Y'all dropped the ball. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. You living in a big house, big mansion. Y'all having parties and all that. He out there working. Y'all supposed to be right behind him. Like yo 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 fifty. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. Right. You know what I'm saying? No, they want to sit there and ride the coattail. Right. So of course now, of course, I'm paying, I'm dishing out all the bills. Mm-hmm. I'm paying all expenses while y'all living for free. Mm-hmm. Nah, it ain't gonna happen. You know, I'm I'm pretty sure he came in that fucking house one day and said, "I want everybody out of here." Yeah. I bet you. Yeah. He 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 sold that house too. He had a big house in um, what is it, Connecticut? I think it was. Yeah. And he sold it. He he actually said in his book that he gave the proceeds. He made like three million dollars, and he gave that proceeds up to like uh, some kind of it, as a donation. Yeah, as a donation, because yeah. he could write it off. He could, he could yeah. write it back off yeah. and get the money back. But he he did explain what you just said that listen, I got, I'm not letting nobody hold me back. That was his his whole thing that's, behind the book is like that's always I'm been my mentality. I dictate my own life. Nobody mm-hmm. gonna dictate my life. I'm not gonna go out there and follow somebody, get in trouble. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna bring harm to the people that surround me. I, and the vice versa. I explained that to everybody. Mm-hmm. I said, and on top of that, I said, all of us is a public figure. And I had to learn that the hard way. I had got in trouble. Um, That's true, because you're, you're a walking brand. Correct. Everybody is. Everybody is. Mm-hmm. But uh, I had a situation with a cab driver. Mm-hmm. And I beat up the cab driver. They arrested me. And they was like, Meatloaf, this happens every day. People beating up cab drivers. The fact that you're a public figure is why... The newspapers called you, you know what I'm saying, this and that, because they know who you is already. Mm-hmm. And like I said, when the newspaper, when Daily News called my house and wanted to ask questions, and I said, let me explain something to y'all. Before I get y'all on defamation of character, I need you to do your research on me before you write any scrutiny about me. Mm-hmm. And they were like, damn, you know something. So sure enough, they did their research on me. Give me a nice little such and such, yeah, community activist that does so much for the community, this and that, got into an altercation with a cab driver. Mm-hmm. I said, the altercation could have happened, the cab driver could have pulled over. It was an accident. Right. But not slam my truck and then take off. That's different. That's different. Right. And I said, and like I told the detectives at the precinct, nobody jumped him, I did it. Mm-hmm. I abused him. I felt bad after I did it, you know what I'm saying? But at the time, I didn't care. Right. I said, I've been a victim of hit and run. My whole left arm was, was severed. Mm-hmm. by a cab driver, hit me, and took off. I had four operations on his arm. This arm cost me 277000 to get fixed. Wow. Yes. So like I explained to the DA, I said, at the time, yes, I'm sorry for what I did, but at the time, I didn't care because I was a victim of a hit and run. Mm-hmm. But y'all surpassed that because y'all said, y'all believed the victim. At the time, I was the victim, but y'all believed him over me. Right. And he the one that did the crime. Right. He the one that did the hit and run. Right. Yeah. A lot of times the, the miscommunication can um Correct. Yeah, it can really it turn some turn upside down. Yeah, that's true. So uh now do you still own the nine barbershops or no it's just through I, I consolidate it was just through time, through yeah. throughout the years, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Opening and closing shops, you know what I'm saying? And um right now I'm in the process of looking for a build my apartment building. I could have did it years ago. Mm-hmm. But um I'm just, I'm just tired right now, and I think that's probably why I stopped close, opening up so many barbershops at one time. It just it was getting... Uh, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You mind walking me through the steps and, and opening a barbershop? Like what you got um, to do? I would go to a realtor, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Different locations I would look at, you know what I'm saying? And um, the last shop, the other shop I had before on Notion Avenue, I was supposed to own the building. Mm-hmm. But the son that never was around, me and the father was real tight, real tight older guy yeah and the son put a monkey wrench i can hear you guys over there yeah go ahead (laughs) go ahead man (laughs) (laughs) yeah so you were real tight with the guy yeah i was real tight with the owner of the building and um the son i think he was kind of jealous the fact me and his father were so tight that happens yeah and um the father wound up passing away. He never even told me that the father passed away. We wound up shipping him down south. The father was going to sell me the building where my barbershop was at. Yeah. It was like a 
four family, three storefront building. He was gonna sell me, and the son put a halt on that. Wow. I was I was furious. But that's the only one that that you wanted and yeah. got away. Yeah. But all the others. Yeah, all the others I was renting. You know what I'm saying? Different locations, everything in the star. And um, I just got I got tired of fixing up people's spot. Cause I want to be comfortable for my guys and me. You right. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If I'm here all day, I just want it to be comfortable for everybody. You know right. what I'm saying? You come here, you can relax, you can watch TV, internet. Mm-hmm. You can enjoy your workspace. Right. You know what I'm saying? Cause you hear mostly you you hear more than you home. Absolutely. Would you guys could spend like 16 hours in here? Yeah. If not, sometimes I even stay here. I go in the back and go to sleep, and then go to work from here. Oh. So. That's 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 the life of the boss. Yeah. So. It, it does take a toll though. Yeah, it definitely takes tolls. But you know, you gotta you gotta put all your struggles and and you know, all that shit to the side and just, you know, deal with it when you leave this, leave outside this door, you gotta walk with your head high. Yeah. Cause you know, you you, you can't be weak out here. You know what I'm saying? Nah, nah. So, Especially when you when you when you have something that you're aiming for, like you're trying to build something like solid. Correct. So when you when you got a brand and you are the brand and it, it takes a lot. You got to put in that work. Yeah. I, I don't think a lot of people under, I think people underestimate the value of a hard work. They do. Yeah. And that's, that's what, what you were explaining earlier, that some kids need to go through some hardship so they can understand. But it's, it's really not that easy. You got to put in that grind. You have to. You yeah. have to. Yeah. But it's been great, man. I, I, I really appreciate it. Um, anything you want to share with people that you want to give some kind of feedback for? No. Um. I just want I, I, I want everybody to make it. That's yeah. that's always been my motto. I want everybody to get good. Push, you know, continue pushing. You never know what's gonna happen once you know once you stop. I, they got this thing where you see the guy knocking down the, the dirt, where you see the diamonds. Oh, I and seen then, that. Yeah. yeah. It and was the, like a dig away, right? Exactly, dig away. We so busy, you know. What I'm saying we get we we fast to get discouraged about something. Yeah. Opposed to just keep going. You know what I'm saying? And that's, I've been pushing this shit going on 20 something years. Mm-hmm. And it's like right now I'm getting recognition crazy for what I've been doing for damn near 20 something years already. Yeah, but everything yeah. takes time. Everything takes time. Exactly. And some people think it's overnight. And I'm glad you shared that it, it took you about 20 something years. I swear to you. Yeah. And people don't see that. They don't see it. They just see what they, what's happening now. They yeah. see what's happening now. They don't see fucking everything that was going on. And you that's know, the thing when you're in the trenches, right? You're constantly working, but you don't realize it. But you're, you're constantly in the trenches working, 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 working until one day then everything just starts to connect. And then you pop. Yeah. But then people are looking at it like, oh, he just came out of nowhere. Nah, this shit, this shit real. I remember um, it was funny because I remember the marshals put a notice on my, on my store on Halsey. Really? It's, it ha- it's a normal thing. It happens. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? We all lose track of bills and struggling and sit there. And I was telling the land, the the super, uh, he gonna be said, "Milo, if you want me to take it down? No, leave that shit up there. Let motherfuckers in the neighborhood see that this shit is real. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't I don't want to hide anything. If a marshal knows on my door, it's there for a reason. Right. Because I'm struggling like everybody else is struggling. So when it's time to go to court, I go to court, and business owners go to a different court. But all the business owners. It's me, is 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 El Dominique's there. Shane from um from um um uh uh Pink Elephant. No, Shane from what's the spot on Washington, the food spot. Um So these are community restaurants and yes. shops. So we all everybody know of everybody. Mm. Pink Elephant, Shane's restaurant on Washington, my store, uh it was most but like seven, eight of us. Mm-hmm. But everybody never met everybody, but everybody know of everybody. Right. Oh, you you meatloaf, right? Oh yeah, you, you Shane, right? Mm-hmm. From oh, you such stuff from Pink Elephant. Like we all sit there, everybody in there. You know what I'm saying? So everybody going through the same struggle in these restaurants and businesses. So we all sitting there laughing, you know what I'm saying? Everybody trying to figure out how they gonna get their, you know what I'm saying, get their keys back, you know what I'm saying, get their stores <laughs> back open. And we sitting there laughing. All right, fuck it. It's part of the game. It's part of the game. Yeah. But I think I just think people think it's 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 uh it's 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 easy to say we run a business. Nah. That shit yeah. comes with headaches. But when you hit, you hit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I love it. I love I love the struggle. I love this shit. And that's think that's why I'm still I said I'm gonna die doing this. So I know it already. 
If I've been doing this since I was 14, mm -hmm. I'll be 52 December. I'm still doing it. I'm going to die doing this. Yeah. Now, is that the hustle or it's just the shops, the, the all the businesses? Everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Everything. I collaborate. Everything. Everything mm -hmm. comes with. If somebody said, Meatloaf, we're going to invest in what you got going on, everything got to come with it. Yeah. That's big, man. Yeah. It has to. If you think, all right, if you come to me and talk about, I'm going to invest in what you got going on the motorcycle. Nigga, I got the motorcycle, I got the apparel, I got the barbershop, I got the, the clothing line, I got the, the, the web series, I got everything. Everything comes with it. So you got to work out some numbers because everything coming with it. Yeah, it's going to be some big numbers. Yeah, it got to be big numbers. Yeah. And that's what I vouch every chance I get. That's what's up, man. Hey, man, it's been a pleasure. Bro. Nah, I appreciate, appreciate you taking nah, the time. Nah, definitely. Thank you so much. Nah, definitely. Uh, my man, Meatloaf, uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, everybody. Um, we on Instagram, underscore it, underscore start, underscore now. Um, meatloaf, it's IG. Yeah, Meatloaf, I got four IGs. Um, four IGs. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got everything. I got, I got, I got. Shout it out, tick, brother. I got TikTok under Meatloaf Scalisa. I got my personal page um, at Meatloaf. I got my Rockboy Choppers page at Rockboy Choppers. I got my web series page at Rockboy empire i got my l dominique's page at l dominique's upscale grooming everything is a brand everything that's comes what i'm talking it. about man that's what i'm talking about so and uh my motorcycles yeah rock boy choppers <laughs> everything comes with it man. by the way um for those that's listening on the radio uh he does have a sick one but if you happen to be on youtube you'll be able to see it. Uh, we have a picture of his chopper. It's, it's like something special. You got to see it. Yeah, and it seems man. like that's his passion because every time I'm on his IG, he's just, he's uh, either on it, riding and enjoying life, man. I swear. Yeah. All right, man, it's been great. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a good one. Appreciate it. Uh, well, All right, this is my socks, my Rockboy socks. I just got it this week.